What's going on everybody? Spaceballs here. Welcome back to another clip of Chris the Guardian's video. Today guys, we're going to be going over Yuki. I guess you can kind of call this a guide, but the other day on stream on Twitch, I now stream live on Twitch if you guys didn't know. So if you want to check me out there, that will be in the description as it always is in all of my videos. But we were using Yuki and I was able to auto stage 1 through 100 easy and hard on vapor. And I never realized how broken he was until we did that. I didn't have to touch it once. I literally just autoed from 1 to 100 on easy and hard. So I wanted to make a guide on him, a guide slash video on him right away for you guys. This way you guys can see how broken he is and make sure that you guys build him as soon as possible. So I will show you here in this video how to build him. And you can pretty much use him everywhere, all PvE content. As you know, you can't use him in PvP, but he's just so good in PvE, it doesn't really matter that you can't use him in PvE because you can just use him everywhere else. So let's get right into this one, guys. Let's pull up the Yuki here. Right after this video, guys, I'm going to be doing the Grind is Real Part 17, I think it is. And in that video, we're going to pick the random giveaway winner. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. I'm very excited. Oh, that's right. I switched my Yuki to light. So he's actually right in the beginning of my list now. So here is our Yuki. These are the runes I have on him. I fed him Athena, which I recommend all of you guys either feed your Yuki Athena or Necromancer. This way, it's always the dominant skill, because whatever the leader skill is, whether it's 5-star, 4-star, 3-star, unless your slot 3 is higher, it's always going to be the dominant skill. So it's best just to maybe craft a Necromancer. If you have a lot of guild points, just maybe buy the Athena like I did, and then he'll always be light or dark, which they're both the same, whether he's light or dark dark it doesn't matter either way you go so this is the build i'm using on him currently oh not this one let me just switch this i was using him in lair see there's just so many builds for him guys you can use him in lair you can use him vapor spire any pve content you can use him as a farmer he's just pretty much good everywhere he's just like a cheat code we're just going to call him yuki the cheat code if you have yuki built right he can pretty much break the game for you so this is the build i used in vapor we used the Demonic Swordsman's passive, then we used the Elven Archer A2, and we used the Monk A1. And when I did this, he wasn't, I didn't have him sanctified. He wasn't sanctified, and he had zero skill ups. So don't worry about that, guys. You don't need to have him skilled up, and you don't need to have him sanctified. He'll work just as good as if he had those things. So just keep that in mind as well. Now, there's many builds for him. We're going to stick with this build for the video because I believe this build is the most well rounded build for him as far as spire and vapor goes because this a2 here drains 30 percent of their energy at a 40 percent chance once you scale it up it goes up to a 50 percent chance and it only hits one less time than the orc warrior skill and then you got the demonic swordsman passive which is once it's scaled up it's a hundred percent chance to restore 20 percent of all allies energy every time he hits so paired with an AoE like the Elven Archer, or we can say the Orc Warrior A2, or even the Phantom Dance, any of these that hit a bunch of times, more than six times, are going to be effective on your Yuki. Now I'll quickly go over a, a Lair build as well with you guys. Now if I use him in Lair, I'd like to use him with Druid's A2 so I can get rid of my Druid. You can also use the Golem passive so then you can get rid of your Druid and your Golem in your lair team so he's actually filling two spots and then you can give him the holy swordman a1 which then he's actually filling three roles so he's just good everywhere he's just good everywhere it all depends on where you want to use him for today we're going to stick to the spire vapor and colossus build which is this one right here and you can also use the tornado slash which is a 10 percent or 20 percent chance to reduce the target's defense for two turns i use him with succubus so i'd rather have the energy drain personally but again it's up to you on you know how you want to synergize him with what team you're using him with just as long as he synergizes with the team you'll be okay but i believe this is a very good general build to put on your yuki so now let's go over runes sanctify i have him with scorn because i was using him in lair also and i have him on kind of like a hybrid build which i'm going to show you guys right now so you can go with attack anything attack like scorn brave you can if you want to use a more tanky you can go with something hp like robust so he doesn't take as much damage but i try to pack as much attack on him as possible and also one thing i want to go over with you as well is you can actually let me see how to pull it up here you can actually switch his stats all right so here you go here to stack conversion 
So if you're going to use him more as an attacker, he has a really high based HP when starting off. So you can actually take this HP and switch it over to attack or vice versa, uh, defense into HP or defense into attack. So if you plan on using him the way I use mine, you're probably going to want to take some of this HP and move it over to attack, which will give him a higher based attack. So with this build, that's what I plan on doing in the future and getting rid of some of this base HP and switching it to based attack. But let's get into the rune part of it. So I have my full conflict because I use him with nukers and it's good to have that extra attack on him as well. So we'll go right into a slot one here. Slot one, crit rate, defense, HP, crit damage. Now this isn't the best rune. It's a legendary, so eventually I'm going to lock the crit rate and crit damage and reroll the defense and HP. Slot two, speed, crit damage, hit percentage, defense, HP. Slot three, speed, HP, crit rate, resistance. You're going to see a trend here as you always do because when you're ruining you know, a damage dealer or support, you're always going to stick to the, you know, those substats that you're looking for. So we got slot four. This is actually, oddly enough, this is crit rate. This is legendary. I plan on reappraising this really soon in the future and hoping to get a bunch of crit damage and speed. It's okay to run crit rate on your Yuki because he only has 15% base crit rate. So it's really hard to get him at 100%, especially when you're using the Demonic Swordsman's passive. So it's definitely okay to put crit rate on him in this case. Then we got slot 5, crit damage, hit percentage, speed, defense. And we got slot 6, speed, crit rate, HP, defense. And sanctified, I already showed you guys. And we can go over rune sets. Again, you can't really go wrong with Yuki and what runes you put on him as far as rune sets go. I mean, he'll be good in blessing. He'll be good in attack, of course, especially if you're using him to do a little bit of damage. Defense, I might stay away from. Agile, really good because you kind of want him to be a little fast so he keeps taking turns to keep proccing that passive. Wild's good because it's going to be hard for you to get crit rate on him. Destruction's good because you want some crit damage on him as well. So if you run Destruction with a crit rate slot 4, that could also work really good. Focus, it depends if you're trying to land a defense break or not. It's good for the Elven Archer to have a little bit of um, hit percentage on him to make sure that he's reducing that 30% energy. Um, I would stay away from the resistance. Desperation, top tier I would say on him because again, he hits. he's hitting AoE. So if he has a chance to stun on top of stealing energy or reducing energy, that's just another, you know, form of control all packed into one monster. So Drain could be good on him if you want to keep him fully healed. I, you probably don't need it though. Frenzy you don't need because you're not using him in PvP, you're only using him in PvE. Berserk would be really good on him, again, because he would be taking a lot of turns, but it's not a necessity. Counter would be good because then he'll proc his A1, which will proc his passive. Guard, shields, always good, but you don't need it. Immunity, you don't need it because you're not using him in PvP. Revenge could be good because he's going to do additional damage based off of max HP, which will be good because it'll just be more damage. As far as team runes go, Conflict being number one. Prayer, Unity, Hit, they're not terrible, but they're definitely usable if you have them and they're really good runes. Don't be afraid to throw them on your Yuki. He will work just fine. So that's pretty much it for the build part of this. So now let's get right into some action with him. And I will show you here before we actually get into it. I would show you guys some vapor stuff. The only issue is, is I finished it. And it literally took me like an hour, hour and a half to finish hard and common guys. Literally, this guy is a cheat code. If you have Yuki built properly, you will absolutely break the game as far as, you know, vapor, spire, any PVE content goes. Because he's just that good in what you can use him for. So just know I did that. That's the first time I was ever able to fully auto one through a hundred easy and hard including the falling angel floor without having to touch the mouse once i was literally just talking to the stream the entire time and i would just click each the next match and he literally just auto through the entire thing so i hope you guys can do the same thing with Uriyuki, which i'm sure you can as long as you pair him with the right team which again just control defense break a nuker and then yuki there to keep boosting the turn meter so I'll show you here in C12 what team you can kind of use him with. You can pretty much use him with anything, especially if you feed him Athena and he's light based. So here we got our Medusa. We got our Elven Queen. Let's just switch her real quick. I'd like to use this one in C12. So we got, so let's just put a defense breaker in here. We can either put Shaman or Succubus. Either one would be fine. We're going to go with Succubus for this particular team. I think this team will work good. Let's go with this. Just so you guys can see, it's not necessarily just... It's just to show you how like how many turns Yuki is going to give my team here. Because he really is. He really is broken, guys. You need to build your Yukis immediately. 
get those passives on him. You can also use the Auric Warrior passive on him as well. I didn't want to go over that too much in this particular video because I was just trying to show you more of a build for Spire and Vapor. Um, Spire, you could definitely use the Auric passive because he's just going to keep taking turns. But I feel like this passive is a little more effective because he keeps giving your team so much attack bar. Like you see there, he just literally filled my team's attack bar. So you might want to maybe have him move close to last because if he moves after the rest of your team, then he's going to boost their attack bar, which is going to make them move again. So he can either move first or last. Like you can have him really, really fast or have him move last. This way after your team moves, Yuki moves and then boosts everybody's turn meter, you know, at the end of his turn, which brings them into another turn, which will bring him back into another turn. But as you can see here, he's just constantly procking our turn meter and he's reducing their turn meter because of the Elven Archer A2. And I think a lot of people don't realize how good the Elven Archer A2 actually is even besides just being on Yuki, just being on Elven Archer itself, it's such a good A2 because it reduces energy and it's an AOE hit and it hits um, two times. I believe two, each enemy two times. So the more enemies is the more hits it will do. So Inspire, it's definitely going to proc a lot more than in anything else. It's a, our Yuki did die here, but you get the drift on how much turn meter he gave our team. The Giant was only able to move once. Because our Yuki's not really that tanky. He's built more towards the damage side of things. But here, we'll, we'll show you some more stuff. Um, Hydra, right after I do the Grinders Reel 17, I will be showing you guys a free-to-play Hydra team as well. You guys can also come watch me on Twitch. We have so much fun on Twitch. So if you guys have any questions or you want to know any certain builds, you want me to look at your account live on Twitch, I would love to do that stuff for you guys. So let's get in. Let's, let's just do a magic run. I usually run 7. I don't necessarily need to run 10 because... It's much. I'm always missing um, Mark Two and Mark One more than I'm missing Mark Three. But I'll show you an M10 run as well. As you can see, he's already in all of my teams because he is just that good. Where he gets put in every single team, so we could probably just run him with something like this. Let's go with this. See how this goes. But again, as far I wish I could show you some vapor runs with him. Like I wish I could show you vapor hard floor 90 with the fallen angel because he literally wrecked that floor. It's the first time I didn't have to use Centaur or anything like that. I just threw my Yuki in there. I put my I put a Selene with him and I just pressed auto. I put a damage dealer. I think I put Lynch or something like that and a Bone King. And he literally just autoed the floor down like less than five minutes. And I remember when Fallen Angel used to take me like an hour, hour and a half when I first started playing this game. So it's just amazing to me like how game changing Yuki actually is. So we'll do another run or two here. I'm, I think you guys get the point by now. I'm not going to drag this one out and make this like a 20-25 minute video. I just want you guys to be aware of how good your Yuki is. And this goes for Spire. This goes for Vapor. Any PE content. He's a good campaign farmer. He's good in Lair. As long as you have the right build on him, just make sure you're building him for whatever it is you're using him for. This build you have on, I have on him here is good for Colossus, Spire, and Vapor. The Lair build is obviously going to change, but he does have... Pacific builds for each one of those as well as I did show you guys some you know alternate builds for him in lair but yeah again he's just he's so good he's so broken I haven't honestly realized how good he was until my stream everybody in the stream was like you have to use your Yugi why are you not using your Yugi he's so good he's so broken get him in there and you'll just be able to auto everything and they were 100% right guys I threw my Yugi in there and he was just autoing everything and if you guys want tomorrow night on Twitch, live on Twitch, I will post it to YouTube also some some of it. But we're going to start doing Spire tomorrow live on Twitch. We're going to start at floor 100. And we're going to try to get all the way to floor 500 live on Twitch tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I will leave the link in the description if you guys want to join us for that. We're going to have a lot of fun tomorrow. So I hope to see you guys there. And I'll also can give you more you know, tips and tricks on Yuki and help you guys Maybe get through some of the floors in Spire that you guys are stuck with. So that was another reason I wanted to post this video right away for you guys. I'm guessing now you guys get the point on how good Yuki is and how much he's boosting our turn meter and keeping our team going. So we're going to wrap this one up. Like I said, I don't want to make it too long. I wanted to make a nice quick video for you guys to showcasing how good your Yuki is. So make sure you guys are doing your world boss and unlocking your Yukis as soon as possible because he will definitely break the game for you. So as far as World Boss goes, just make sure you're building like Lich, Garuda, Mountain King, 
Anything that does big damage, Destructive Idol, Iron Heart, all those monsters do huge damage and roll boss, and those will get you more Yuki coins, then you'll be able to get your Yuki faster. That's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. Like I said, if you want to follow me on Twitch, that is in the description. We're going to be picking the winners for the random giveaway in the Grind is Real Part 17, which I'm going to record right after I end this one. We are going to start a new giveaway because we're like two subs away from 900. We're going to start our 900 sub giveaway. So thank you guys, as always, for the continued support. I really appreciate it, guys. As always, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Spaceballs out. Peace. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to our random giveaway. The comment picker is finally working, guys. I'm just going to take this probably one, two minute little clip. And I'm going to put it on the end of our next video. So good luck to all of you guys. Don't worry if you guys don't win this random giveaway because I can do a random giveaway at any time. So just make sure you're subbed to the channel, you're liking and commenting on all the videos to be a part of these random giveaways. As you can see here, we're so close to 900 subs. So once we hit the 900 mark, we'll do our normal 100 sub giveaway, which we'll get into that once we hit 900 subs, as we always do. But with no further ado, we're going to pick the random giveaway winner the same way we did last time. We're going to pull into our Lucky Bulldog Cup. We're going to pick a number out of this cup, which is going to represent our last 30 videos. So starting from the first one, which is the Grind Israel Part 17. That one being number one, going all the way to our last 30. So here we go. Let's pick out our winner. Okay. And we got number... I just want to make sure it wasn't 21. So we got number 12. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, but video number 12. So here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here. We're going to count all the way back to 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which is our summon, our patch summons. This was so much fun, this summoning session. Wait, was this the fun one or was this the... Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember this. I do so many summons. I don't remember anymore, guys. Let's get right this. Let's mute this. Sorry if you guys heard the video. It's hard for me to click it fast enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy, paste the link as we always do. Our comment picker is finally working. I don't know what was going on with this thing, guys, but it wasn't working for like two days. It was just a white screen. I couldn't figure it out, but here we go. Let's fetch it. Anything goes. We're not going to include replies because it's mostly me that's replying to the comments. We're just going to leave it like this. Here we go. 35 comments. Okay, once again, guys, good luck to you guys. Thank you so much for the support. This is for $40, guys. The random giveaway is always the biggest prize we ever do. This one's going to be for 40 You never know when I can do one of these, guys. So just like I said, you know what to do to be a part of these. So here we go. Congratulations to Mark. Mark, I just pulled my second match of tail yesterday. Let me do your summons. Kidding aside, bro. You're probably going to summon it later in the game. Like your BK. And it's funny. You're 100% right. Because I just recently pulled Teo right after they kind of like nerfed him a little bit. I don't want to say nerfed him, but fixed him. And I ended up pulling him right after that. So now I do have Teo. If you have a couple of videos, you will absolutely know that. But congratulations. You just won $40. Thank you so much for your support. And, that, and that's pretty much it for this. So I'm going to stick this on the end of the video. Thank you guys for being so patient with me. Um, we'll do another one of these really soon. I'm not going to wait as long. We'll, we'll do one in like maybe like a week or two. And we also got the 900 sub giveaway coming really soon. As always, I love you guys. I will see you in the next one. Spaceballs out. Peace.